The space race has entered an exciting new age, with India joining the exclusive club of countries to have landed a craft on the moon. It's a great leap forward for the Indian space program and for Australia's growing space industry, which has a lot riding on its success. They're known for their flamboyance, so it's a real party when all of India is over the moon. Sir, we have achieved soft landing on the moon. Yes. India is on the moon. Even the Prime Minister was in party modi. This success belongs to all of humanity. It will help moon missions by other countries in the future. Plenty to celebrate, India now a serious player in the space race, this achievement a giant leap. It's historic, it's superb. India just did a very smooth landing on the moon. We just, saw the, we just saw it and it's a historical moment for India. We feel very proud to be Indians today and it's just a great feeling. I'm feeling super excited and super motivated and now I also want to be the part of ISRO because it motivated me a lot. And what was even more historic, uh, they're the first nation to land uh, a space object on the south pole of the moon. Only a few years ago in 2019, India tried this very same mission and unfortunately it ended in failure with the Vikram lander crashing to the surface. Dr Rebecca Allen is co-director of Swinburne University's Space Technology and Industry Institute. They've landed on the South Pole. Now this is where we think the vast you know, majority of water ice is stored. Water is a critical resource. So if you're the first one there, whether you're analyzing it or able to utilize it, then that puts you in an advantageous position. At a cost of $117 million, it's one of the cheapest moon missions in history. And the Indian Space Research Organization's success came just days after Russia failed. This was Russia's first moon mission in 47 years and it ended in disaster. The Russian space corporation Roscosmos had planned to be the first nation to land on the south pole of the so-called dark side of the moon. Now the honour of being first goes to India, a country with even greater ambitions in space. The Indian space programs are very ambitious and it seems to be going from strength to strength. It really demonstrates they are one of the world's space powers. Uh, they have the capabilities to uh, land things on celestial objects uh, like the moon uh, and they're quickly advancing their human spaceflight programs. Enrico Palermo is head of the Australian Space Agency which has plenty of skin in the game. So the tracking stations are in New Norcia, Western Australia, and the Canberra Deep Space Communication Complex are here in Canberra, are both operated by the CSIRO. We're there hand in hand uh, with Indian partners providing telemetry and tracking and, and the data to track this historic landing. If we look into the future, we've got a program that's going to bring Indian space companies together with Australian space companies to create new innovations. And Australia is looking to support the Gaganyaan Human Spaceflight Program. So, in the 21st century version of the space race, who's leading and why should we care? And now we're looking at going back and having long-term human habitation on the moon. So that's a whole nother challenge. And so we love the idea of something that should be impossible, being able to overcome that feat. You can bet the Americans are taking it seriously. In terms of putting people back on the moon, Artemis has got, I think we've got, you know, they, we, <laughs> um, they've got a clear advantage. I love to associate myself with this incre incredible mission. We're going to venture out into the cosmos. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson leaves no doubt about what's at stake, especially in terms of China's ambitions in space. We are in a space race with China. They are aggressive, they are good, but I wish they'd do what the old Soviet Union did. When it came to civilian space, I wish they'd cooperate and be transparent. 
NASA is still focused on its Artemis program. Next year, it will send astronauts to orbit the moon. Then in 2025, Artemis 3's mission is to put astronauts on the moon's surface for the first time since 1972. We're thinking about the day Australia's uh, rover gets to the moon. Uh, so we are in the process of have two, two teams around Australia that are designing Australia's first lunar rover. Uh, and we look to send that to the moon uh, in NASA around 2026, 2027. Major leaps for mankind, regardless of the nationality.